Dave? How do you always find me? For the past two years. I've been stuck in the past. Look, I've done what you asked me to do. Can you now send me back to 2023? You know what? Fine. You seem to have learned your lesson. Really? Well, yes. But first... Oh, for fuck's sake! We watched an amazing movie that I wanted last time. But I am now willing to let you choose a film. Really? Yes. It is Halloween. You need to find a truly spooky movie. One that is certainly worthy of the time of me, the ancient deity. The creator of the universe and the seven worldly dimensions. The inventor of time, space, spoons and life itself. Dave. Then we shall watch... Scooby-Doo. Hang on, what? Scooby-Dooby-Doo, where are you? We got some work to do now. Scooby-Dooby-Doo, I should have sent you back to the French Revolution. We need some help from you now. Realising your worst fears. Development of a live-action adaptation of the iconic series dates all the way back to 1998, when Simpsons writer Jay Cogan teamed up with Mike Myers to write the screenplay, with the latter also being attached to play Shaggy, but it never materialised. Yep, Austin Powers was nearly Shaggy. Oh, thank goodness. However, just a year later, a new screenplay was produced by Craig Titley. <laughs> Titley. <laughs> Pardon? Which would have served as an origin story about how Mystery Incorporated first formed, and would have also included references to other Hanna-Barbera creations such as Top Cat, Wacky Races, and Josie and the Pussycats. No thank you. However, when Hanna-Barbera was brought out by Warner Brothers, Titley was promptly booted from the project and replaced by a pre-Guardians of the Galaxy James Gunn, who rewrote much of the script to his own liking, changing it to a reunion story about the gang coming back together after being apart for a number of years. However, certain elements of Titley's script were carried over into guns, such as a love interest for Shaggy and an island-based cult turning people into monsters. The studio liked Gunn's script so much that the film was immediately greenlit, and not long after, in March 2000, Roger Gosnell was set to direct. Because clearly the director of Home Alone 3 Never Been Kissed and the fucking Smurfs knows what makes good family entertainment. I'm gonna solve this one first. When it came to casting, Sarah Michelle Gellar... Oh, my lovely Sarah Michelle Gellar. Just look at the Queen herself. And Freddie Prince Jr. Well, I'll kill him, let me at him! Look at him and his stupid, stupid face with the most obvious wig in the world that apparently isn't a wig, but it looks like a wig. And his stupid, stupid jacket and his stupid, stupid glasses. Fred, oh, he was so handsome. No, he wasn't! <laughs> Ah, my favourite scene! Don't take it personally. Anyway, the two of them were... He's an asshole. look at him! Anyway... Little prick! Anyway... How did he become... What's he got that I don't, other than money and success and dashing good looks and hair? What does he have? The two of them- I mean, I'm just saying! Don't take it personally. The two of them were immediately sought out to play Fred and Daphne, as the director wanted the characters to be played by a real-life couple. They're not a real-life couple! They're not! And their previous film, I Know What You Did Last Summer, had been a huge hit a few years prior. Weirdly, this film supposedly marks the first time in the franchise's history where the characters are explicitly portrayed as a romantic item. Scooby, you and Fred check upstairs. Velma and I'll look in the basement. Daphne? I mean, Scooby, you and Velma check upstairs, and Fred and I'll look in the basement. Right! Did you watch the cartoon, James? No thanks. Jim Carrey was originally sought out to play Shaggy, but he eventually dropped out and the part was given to Matthew Lillard, who had impressed the director with his performance in 13 Ghosts. Lillard prepared for the role by watching every incarnation of the cartoon that he could get his hands on, and during filming he would scream himself hoarse the night before shooting in order to achieve the character's distinct voice. And therein lies its potential. In fact, Lillard's performance was so widely praised that he would go on to voice Shaggy in every incarnation of the Scooby-Doo franchise to this day 
day, beginning in 2010 after the original voice actor Casey Kasem stepped down due to health issues. Uh -oh. Furthermore, Tim Curry, who was a huge fan of the cartoon, was the reported frontrunner to play the villain. But this didn't work out and the role was played by Rowan Atkinson instead. For years, it was rumoured that the reason Curry dropped out was because he hated the idea of his character being Scrappy-Doo in disguise. But James Gunn dismissed these claims as complete bullshit. Yes, because apparently Tim Curry was absolutely fine playing a transvestite rapist who created a huge supermodel out of thin air, but he draws the line at Scrappy-Doo. Out. Filming began in February 2001 in Queensland and wrapped in June that year, but the final version of the film differed significantly from Gunn's original vision. Originally, the movie was more of a satire of the original series rather than a straightforward adaptation, with a much darker tone and more adult themes, such as Velma being explicitly gay, Shaggy being depicted as a stoner, along with several marijuana references, and Velma and Daphne sharing a kiss during the body switching scene. <laughs> You are 33 years old. However, once the cast was signed on, the studio pushed the filmmakers to make the movie more family friendly, and they were forced to edit it down, though some of the original adult jokes still remained in the film. You're the big banana. Talk about toasted. I'm Mary Jane. Like that is my favorite name. Really? You don't need to know what voulez-vous couché avec moi means to love that song. Dorky chicks like you turn me on too. Oh, ripped! I'm whipped! I can look at myself naked. Furthermore, the character of Luna Ghost was originally intended to be the film's main villain, but after script revisions, he was instead relegated to the first few minutes. That is so mean! Scooby-Doo was released on June the 14th, 2002, and was a massive financial success, grossing $275 million worldwide, but was universally panned by both critics and fans of the cartoon. Roger Ebert in particular despised the film, giving it one out of four stars and saying, Not only am I ill prepared to review this movie, but I venture to guess that anyone who is not literally a member of a Scooby-Doo fan club would be equally incapable. It exists in a closed universe and the rest of us are aliens. Jesus. Good. Furthermore, the majority of the cast and crew disowned the film. Prince had a hard time filming on set as the bleach used to dye his hair blonde caused it to be badly damaged. Geller said that it was the only film of hers she forbids her children from watching. So you'd let them watch The Grudge, but not Scooby-Doo. You should have forbidden them from watching Southland Tales. Yes. Whilst Linda Cardellini, who played Velma. The bitch! She broke up Corey and Topanga and then married Hawkeye! Who are these people? Good riddance. Was also dissatisfied with the final cut, feeling it was too raunchy for a children's film. Didn't stop you all coming back for the sequel though, did it? But even worse is that this film would be the last Scooby-Doo project to be produced by William Hanna and Joseph Barbera, as Hanna sadly died in March 2001, just a month after filming began. Now the courts say it was cancer, but I just think he walked onto set, saw what they had done to his creation, and then offed himself out of shame. It's too dangerous. Look, it's Scooby-Doo. It's harmless fun. Just, just try and give it a chance. <sighs> Fine. <laughs> well, I tried. Hey, get back here! <laughs> the opening is so charming. The CGI of the ghost is silly, but it fits the nature of the cartoon. Come on, they're in the wow -o toy factory. The wow -o toy factory! And just look at these effects, my god, this is embarrassing. It looks like B-roll from an old Star Trek episode, not a big budget blockbuster. Come to think of it, how big was the budget for this film? Well, the thing about that is... Well, come on, man, spit it out. 84 mil. 84 million?! 84 million?! That's how much went into this crap?! What the fuck did they spend it on, the catering?! Was Rowan Atkinson just that hard to get? Did Freddie Prince Jr. want a gold-plated toilet for his trailer? Did Sarah Michelle Gellar keep running out of lipstick? Was this whole production a money laundering scheme for the cartel?! Just to compare, this film cost 24 million more than The Born Identity, 47 million more than The Ring remake, and only 10 million less than the two fucking towers! Where is any of that money present on screen? The costumes look like low-budget cosplays. The cinematography looks like a made-for-TV special. The CGI would make the Spy Kids franchise laugh in despair. So what in fuck's name was the $84 million production budget used for? But that's what I don't really understand with the criticisms. People have ripped on the CGI of Scooby-Doo, but... 
It's Scooby-Doo. Did you see the cartoon? Were you seriously expecting Gollum special effects? Imagine if Scooby-Doo came out and it looked like the fucking roof man. Imagine if it looked like the Ninja Turtles remake. It just wouldn't fit. This is silly and charming and amazingly it looks exactly like the cartoon which is the whole point. Yeah, well, you have bad teeth. But then we get this big emotional moment of them separating for the first time, but why? We've spent 30 seconds with these assholes. Why should we care that we're splitting? Because most people have spent 40 years learning to love these characters. So? Why's that an excuse? You should get us to love the characters in this movie first, so then we feel bad when they break up. You shouldn't have to sit through 80 seasons worth of cartoons to be emotionally invested. Well, you clearly aren't dedicated to Scooby-Doo. It's Scooby-fucking-Doo! It's even worse because they're all reunited again, what, three minutes later? What was the point of all that? And Scooby dresses like a lady and... Nobody notices. Why did kids' movies in the early 2000s think that a male character wearing a dress was the epitome of comedy? No one is stupid enough to believe that. Who's the ugly old brother? Okay, that's a little bit funny. But I still don't like him. And whenever Scooby is sat directly next to a real actor, it does actually look pretty damn good. I mean, if you're gonna rip on anything, make it this plane transition. It looks terrible. That's way worse than the Scooby CGI. They go to a spooky island by someone who looks and acts creepy and is definitely not the villain, but then we see the monsters and yeah, I can't excuse these effects. These are terrible. Somebody let George Lucas into the animated studio. The wide shots look atrocious. What is this? Oh yes, this is most certainly a real castle. Ooh. Of course, Scrappy Doo is beyond annoying, and Gunn did admit that he regretted making him the villain. Yeah, no shit. I mean, we randomly get a backstory of Scrappy being abandoned. Did they really think we wouldn't catch on? In addition to him being about as funny as he was in the original cartoon. Come on, I can still take you. Put him up, you mangy mutt. Oh, oh. His CGI is just as ass. Yes, I'm so convinced that Scrappy's really there. King Kong most definitely looked at this film for artistic inspiration. Jesus Christ, how do the monsters in Space Jam a decade earlier look more believable? They look like something out of Food Fight. I'm convinced they just ran out of money towards the end. They ran out before filming started. All of the budget went into the cast and animating Scooby and maybe the sets. I mean, to be fair, they do look quite charming and magical. So by the time they hit the third act, they were screwed. Rude. And the more you sit through, the worse the effects get. Even their deaths look like ass, And not a nice ass. They look like Rikishi's ass. But this is why I really like the film. It perfectly encapsulates the feeling of the original cartoon. You mean... shit? No! It looks and feels like the original show. It perfectly delivers the silly slapstick. It's just harmless, goofy fun with some great throwbacks to the original. Let's split up and look for more clues. Daphne, you and I. Typical. My glasses. Castles have paintings with eyes that watch you and suits armor you think to sat you, but there's a guy inside who follows you every time you turn around. <laughs> Although some of the references to the cartoon are painfully forced. Scooby Doo, where are you? Scooby Doo, where are you? Scooby Dooby Doo, where are you? Where are you? Oh, but okay, guys, he 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 said the the thing from 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 the thing of the other thing that I remember that I like. Are you okay? <laughs> On top of that, a lot of the references just don't work because of the performances. There's a scene where Daphne theorizes about what's going on with the island's spooky castle, and it's clearly meant to be poking fun at the tropes in the cartoon, but Gella's delivery is so stilted and awkward that it just doesn't work. You take that back! Never! In fact, most of the actors' performances are really off. Especially Fred! They're supposed to be this tight-knit gang, but the actors all have the chemistry of awkward teenagers rehearsing a Shakespeare play. It's cringe-inducing. Hell, they have more chemistry with the CGI dog than they do with each other. Although, Matthew Lillard gives one of the greatest performances of the 21st century. It's true. In Scooby Bloody Doo. Scooby Doo, what are you doing, man? Man, like why am I wearing a dress? The only thing I like better than an eggplant burger 
is a chocolate-covered eggplant burger. Yep, this is the same psychopath from Scream, ladies and gents. To be fair, the friendship between Shaggy and Scooby is actually handled really well in the film. Linda Cardellini does deserve a lot of credit for maintaining that voice for the entirety of the movie, though. In fact, I do think the entire main cast is pretty well selected. I mean, for one, they openly admit that Freddie Prince Jr. has absolutely no personality. The only thing missing is a mindless zombie. <laughs> He basically plays a popular star that everyone loves, the polar opposite of real life. It should have been me! Buffy is over! No, it's not! It's done with! They're coming back with a new season! It's been 21 years! They're making sure it's perfect! Joss Whedon got cancelled! You misunderstood, it's coming back! Jinkies, that's impressive. To his credit, he does start to watch a videotape on how to act. Sorry, bro. No big whoop dog. And just when you think he can't possibly get any more intolerable. Yo, yo, the biatch was like, what? And I was like, later on. It's electric. Bah, boom. Woo! And back it up. Not to drive the bus. Drive the bus and stop. And back it up. I'm going to kill myself. I'll find a fucking way. Are you challenging me? Although Sarah plays Daphne as a damsel in distress, which is fine, but admittedly sometimes my beautiful wife does have a bad read. No way! You, you can't quit. I was gonna quit in like two seconds. And now everyone is gonna totally think that I copied off the smart girl. And I don't remember Daphne being this annoying in the cartoon. Not fair. I was going to solve a mystery all by myself for the first time ever. But funnily enough, this movie actually does the opposite of what you'd expect from a very dated movie. And they body shame the skinny woman. She's a little skinny aerobic sized booty. Twice. Oh, Daph, what's wrong with you? Don't you ever eat? But, wait, Pamela Anderson? Why is Pamela Anderson in Scooby-Doo? Why not? In fact, why is Smash Mouth in Scooby-Doo? Why not? They were in Rat Race the next year too. I think they were just following Rowan Atkinson around. And it turns out they actually had a second song. Who knew? That was weird. But why did Scooby have to disguise himself to be allowed on a plane if a cat is clearly allowed on a plane? In fact, how can Scooby read? You're seriously questioning that? I'm just beginning to question the logic of Scooby-Doo. I mean, there's literally a scene where a bartender casually passes the phone to a talking dog and doesn't even bat an eye. Just walk into the dark, shadowy part of the forest where no one can see you. Okay. <laughs> but that's why I love this movie. What? Everything is so nonchalant and straight and it's brilliant. What are you doing? Now I have to start my voodoo ritual all over again. The movie is so self-aware with its goofy nature, it's hilarious. But you're scary. And you knew I'd do the opposite of what you said. So you told me not to go to the castle, so I would go up to that castle where you set a trap to capture me. Even Rowan Atkinson jumping to ridiculous conclusions just so the plot makes some kind of sense. They look like sober, well-behaved college kids. Precisely. And they didn't before they came. They changed. In other words, a magic spell. <laughs> just the way that they're like, you know what, we know it's dumb, but fuck it, we're gonna have some fun with it. They even make a fart joke funny! Until they kill it. Again, why did early 2000s comedies think that fart jokes were all the rage? In fact, almost all the jokes in this are pathetically lazy. Just look at this! Haha, ha, the cult leader looks like Mola Ram from Temple of Doom. Was this really the best they could come up with? Fart jokes and dated movie references? But... Why did Daphne stick her tongue out like that? Our friends have been kidnapped. <laughs> the fuck was that? <laughs> what? It's funny! It's just random, it's not funny! It's both! Are you not enjoying it? No! Oh. This is like the opposite of what I wanted to do today. I don't even think they gave Rowan Atkinson a script most of the time. I think they just said, hey Rowan, pull some faces, do your thing, have at it. How do you make Rowan Atkinson unfunny? It's almost an achievement. Although the image of Atkinson just doing this whole monologue to an empty chair is pretty amusing. Wait, did he just mouth along to the ringleader's dialogue? Get some new extras. Might be dangerous for you. If anyone messes with me, I'll just open a can of 2,000 year old Chinese whoop ass on it. What? Why Chinese? What? Why Chinese? Why Chinese? What's the joke? It's Scooby-Doo. Why are you asking questions to which you already know the answers? Wait, 
What the hell was that? Fred and Velma like each other now? Since when? And it's never mentioned again. In fact, what happened to Velma being gay? She likes another dude later on. What, they can have tit jokes and stoner jokes, but you can't let a character be gay? We have to protect the children. Ban the gays. And of course, through all of these hundreds of souls, Shaggy the dumbass is somehow able to grab Velma's perfectly on the first try. But it is worth it for this funny joke. Thank you so much, you saved me, thank you. Sorry, I'm uh, looking for my friends. But Fair play to all of the actors though for playing characters stuck inside the wrong body, they do nail it. Although a good chunk of the dubbing is hilariously obvious. They have a nice sweet moment where they all reconcile to help save Scooby, banding together one last time to save the day. Why is this a big deal? They've been a group for the entire film. Also, oh, Aw, the movie's trying to have some emotional way. That's sweet. Let's get jinky with it. Sorry, what? Let's get jinky with it. One more time. Let's get jinky with it. <sighs> Oh, sorry. I needed that. Then we get the cliche of the mindless horde of brainwashed people into a trance and the heroes have to pretend to be one of them to sneak in before Fred fucks it all up by trying to be funny. Why did you think that he was going to be this big star in comedy? I mean, granted, you didn't put as much preference on him to like David Arquette and he's not as bad as that, but, but why? What will you see? I won't lie, as much as I love this film, the whole third act is pretty much mindless noise. The charm of the film certainly runs dry by the end. By the end? And then Daphne suddenly becomes Buffy. Yeah, apparently she could do this the whole time. What, did a vampire slayer stunt double swing by and they randomly decided to give her a part? Saved by a very nice remix of the theme song there. I'm blowing up a solar system. And now, they're a couple. Yep. After Fred sexually assaulted her own body, they're a couple. The fuck did this come from? It's literally never alluded to in the whole movie other than the one joke where he wanted to go and investigate with her and not Velma. And now, they're a couple too. I mean, I guess they've had more time together than Fred and Daphne. And now, they're also a couple. Well, at least they're kind of cute together and had some decent development. But instead of boring closing credits, we get a long dragged out scene of Scooby and Shaggy eating hot chili peppers. Oh no! This film is AIDS! Oh, I love it. It's just a lot of fun. I feel like they could have scraped 10 minutes off the runtime as there's not a whole lot going on in terms of plot, but the performances are so much fun. It perfectly captures the feel of the cartoon and it's just got some wonderful charm to it. The humor is really clever at points with its self-aware attitude and I just think Scooby-Doo is an absolute blast. I just don't get it. I can't claim to be a huge fan of the cartoon or anything, but I just don't see what anyone would get out of this film. It doesn't work as a satire, it doesn't work as a family film, it doesn't work as a raunchy comedy, it just plain doesn't work. The plot is non-existent, the performances besides Lillard are horrendous, the effects are embarrassing, the jokes are about as funny as a nursing home being bombed. Some of the sets are nice enough, but all in all it's one of the worst adaptations of a children's property I've ever seen. That being said, it is at least short. It's only about 80 minutes minutes long and it strangely feels it. It just kind of shows up, does its thing for a bit and then fucks off. Like a bird taking a shit on your car. It's not good, but there's worse things it could be. Now, please can I go back to 2023? <laughs> After making me watch that? <laughs> Look, I'm sorry, okay? You gotta help me. This serial killer's after me. And who do you think sent them? <laughs> not you, Dave. You made me watch Scooby-Doo. And for that, you must pay. 
You were supposed to rebel against the supervillains, not join them! They will continue to come after you until you redeem yourself for 10 years of shitty reviews. Or are dead. Whichever comes first.